Bioidentical versus synthetic hormones. What's better for your health? Hi, this is Dr. Ruscio, and just the other day I had a patient walk into the office who is a nurse anesthesiologist, and she was on a synthetic estrogen replacement patch. And I went into my normal spiel about the pros and cons and some of the dangers associated with synthetic hormones. And she seemed receptive, but a little bit unsure because she hadn't heard any of this information before. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'll send you a paper on the issue, give it a read, and then let me know what you think. Well, she came back in two days later and she said, I'm totally convinced I want to switch to, bi to uh, bioidentical. So I thought I'd review this research paper, which is one of my favorite research papers on the topic, to help give you a synopsis of the same thing. So the paper I'll be discussing today is by Kent Haltorf, and he is a uh, medical doctor who did a great review paper on the risks and benefits associated with synthetic versus bioidentical hormones. So to jump right in, we'll start with his conclusion. Physiological data and clinical outcomes demonstrate that bioidentical hormones are associated with lower risks, including the risks of breast cancer and cardiovascular disease, and are more efficacious than their synthetic and animal-derived counterparts. He continues, until evidence is found to the contrary, bioidentical hormones remain the preferred method of hormone replacement therapy. So there's his conclusion. And let's first define what bioidentical hormones are and what synthetic hormones are. So bioidentical hormones are exact copies of estrogen or progesterone, and they are typically synthesized from plants. Synthetics are not exact copies, and this is likely why they have undesirable side effects. They're often synthesized or derived from animals. So how did Dr. Haltorf arrive at his conclusion? Well, he reviewed three topics, clinical effectiveness, physiological actions on breast tissue, and the risk of breast cancer and cardiovascular disease. Let's examine some of the evidence supporting his conclusion. So regarding the clinical effectiveness, let's look at synthetic versus bioidentical progestins or progesterone. Progestins is the nomenclature used for synthetic progesterone, and progesterone is the nomenclature used for uh, bioidentical progesterone. So he reviews four studies and in these four studies, women, uh, after switching from synthetic to bioidentical hormones, all four groups of women in all four of these studies reported greater satisfaction, fewer side effects, and improved quality of life. Specifically, there was, and now again, this is when, when women went from switching from synthetic to bioidenticals, women, all the women in each four of these studies concluded um, uh, what, what I'm listing here, and uh, here's the, the specifics. A 30% reduction in sleep problems, a 50% reduction in anxiety, a 25% reduction in menstrual bleeding, a 30% improvement in sexual function, a 60% decrease in depression, a 30% decrease in body pain, and a 40% reduction in difficulty thinking. Overall, 65% of the women said they preferred or they felt better uh, when making the switch from synthetic to bioidentical. So there's some pretty compelling evidence there. Now an important note is that synthetic or bioidentical progesterone don't seem to have much difference on endometrial tissue, but they do on breast tissue. So more data is showing a negative effect in regards to breast, breast cancer, and, and breast related disorders than on endometrial tissue uh, in reference to synthetic or bioidentical progestins or progesterone. Now continuing on, looking at the physiological action on breast tissue, looking at synthetic versus bioidentical. So synthetic progestins may increase cancer risk. They may decrease apoptosis, which is an anti-cancer process. Essentially, apoptosis is a process in which a cell recognizes it is now turned into a cancerous cell and then self-destructs. So you want to have good apoptotic function. 
Bioidentical progesterone, on the other hand, may decrease cancer risk and may have a protective, uh, maybe may be protective from cancer as it can induce apoptosis, which again is that cellular recognition of uh, being cancerous, which prompts destruction of the cell. Continuing on, synthetic progestins may increase estrogen-stimulated cell growth that's associated with cancer, whereas uh, bioidentical decreases estrogen stimulate, uh, stimulation rather on breast cells, and specifically this is in the breast epithelium. Now, synthetics may also convert estrogens into a more dangerous form, and they may increase the formation of cancer-causing metabolites, and specifically, this is the 16-hydroxyestrone, and the, the 16-OH is, is just a convention, a way of showing uh, what estrogens are broken down into. So, um, for example, estrone will get broken down into methoxy and then hydroxyestrogen as, as the body is trying to detoxify it and push it out of the body. And uh, as this is happening, you can form um, byproducts that are actually dangerous. And the 16-hydroxy uh, breakdown product has actually been correlated with cancer. So synthetics may increase this dangerous fraction um, of estrogen known as 16-hydroxy. Um, now switching back to the other side here with the bioidenticals, bioidenticals may downregulate estrogen receptor 1, which is associated with uh, breast cancer, and may also have anti-estrogenic effects in breast tissue and decrease breast cell growth and division. Um, what this really means is that estrogen has a stimulatory effect on breast cells, and if breast cells are overstimulated, you may uh, run into uh, cancer. Progesterone has the ability to dampen this um, uh, division activity that's stimulated by estrogen. So uh, it has a pretty important effect, um, progesterone that is, uh, to regulate some of the cancer-promoting effects of excessive estrogen stimulation. Now looking at the risk of breast cancer.